Rockhound, tell me why I have brought you here. What? Tell me why I brought you here. Uh, I've won a prize. Ow, oh, that really hurt. Rockhound, I have two things I need you to do. Then you are free to go about your daily business. Well, as long as it doesn't involve you hitting me again, that actually sounds really reasonable. That will be up to you. Firstly, I want you to tell me why you make videos about Inbox Studios games. And then, I want you to provide me with the most detailed breakdown of the finals game trailer that the world has ever seen. A few minutes later. Why do I do this? Because the money's good, the scenery changes, and they let me use explosives, okay? Everybody knows the world ain't right Down on your knees Get up and fight a rock out here! Yesterday I was lucky enough to join a group of other content creators and some gaming journalists who were all invited by the team at Embark Studios to attend a virtual game briefing for the finals, which is going to be a free-to-play team-based first-person shooter game. It will also be the first game released by the Stockholm-based studio, with a launch scheduled for around the end of this year. It will be available at launch on PC, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. As part of the game briefing, we also got to watch the much-anticipated gameplay trailer for the game. We were given a rundown of what the game's about by Embark's co-founder and chief content officer Rob Runison, their creative director Gustav Tillaby, and their head of communications Sven Grundberg. They also provided details about the upcoming closed alpha playtest which starts on September 29. That's right, it's just a couple of days away. We were able to ask the Embark team some questions so that we could provide you with as much info as possible. Now as of the recording of this video, I haven't received the answers to those questions yet, so as soon as I do, I'll be sure to provide you with an update. As usual, I'll dive into my highly detailed breakdown of the very chaotic game trailer which you're watching here, so you can see what you might have missed. But firstly, I want to give you an overview of the game and provide you with some key info about the upcoming playtest as well. Something to bear in mind is that the information provided to us yesterday relates to how the game will function in the upcoming alpha playtest and that Embark are very much treating it as a proper alpha test after which they may change the scope of the game as opposed to a playtest just being an early access marketing thing to build up hype. So expect some changes to what I'm about to describe. Likewise, the trailer clearly says pre-alpha footage during the gameplay portions of the trailer and the Embark team were very clear and direct to us about what we see in the trailer as being raw pre-alpha gameplay footage. They also said that some of the features will be unproven and even experimental. Now I for one am appreciative of that direct and open approach by the game makers to providing info about what we've been shown, so definitely expect the game at launch to have a lot more polish than in the trailer or alpha playtest, but also expect that things like players per round, round length and so on to potentially change as well. Okay, what is the game? Rob Runison described what Embark Studios are trying to achieve in the finals in one short sentence, and that is the ultimate sandbox experience for an FPS game. In a little more detail, the finals is a game show style, team-based first-person shooter that pushes environmental dynamism, destruction, and player freedom and customization to the limits. The team mentioned that artistically it draws influences from the likes of American Gladiator, the Squid Game TV series, the 1990 arcade game Smash TV, and the 1987 Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Running Man. In the game, for the playtest at least, four teams of three players, so 12 players in total, will compete to find and extract boxes of cash during eight minute long rounds in a small, fully destructible arena with weather and time of day changes. The maps for which are going to be based on iconic real world places. You'll have to work together as a team to grab the cash boxes, take them to an extraction point and defend that location for a period of time until they're extracted. 
When the cash box is extracted, new boxes will appear for all teams to compete over until the end of each eight-minute round. The team with the least cash at the end of the round is eliminated, and then the game moves on to the next round until one team is victorious after three rounds. So in the alpha play test, at least, each full game could last between eight minutes if you're the first team eliminated, and 24 minutes if you're in the top two teams. Now by a fully destructible arena, I mean completely and utterly destructible. In fact, to the point that the trailer opens with the words, in the finals, if you can see it, our contestants can probably destroy it. You'll be able to destroy all of the buildings, neighbouring walls, and pretty much any other object, like furniture for instance, which you'll also be able to throw around. And this is where the work that Embark have been putting in during their first four years as a studio comes into play. The destruction in the game will all be server-side, so every broken wall, door, piece of furniture, inflatable flamingo, or entirely smashed building that you see will be seen exactly the same by everyone else in the game. We were told that this has been achieved by some clever work done by the engineering team at Embark, and they see it as pretty groundbreaking. And from the trailer, I've got to say that the level of destruction looks absolutely mad and is going to make for some totally insane changes to the arenas and, dare I say it, only in the finals moments. Gustav Tillaby said that Embark wants it to be an intuitive game. If you think you want to try something in the game, you should be able to do it. He also said that they may tweak the levels of destruction available to players after the closed alpha if required for fun gameplay. When you first watch the trailer, you might get the impression that the finals is actually a hero shooter, and with a somewhat longish time to kill that was described by Gustav as similar to that of Team Fortress, it would definitely be fair to say that this is not going to be, out of the box, a milsim style shooter. However, one of the key differences that Gustav pointed out is that you have a huge range of customizations that you can make to your character or contestant, as Embark are calling them. So Gustav actually described the game as a hero builder, not a hero shooter. So you'll definitely be in control of your own character and what their individual strengths and weaknesses are. You'll be able to design a character that plays just the way you like. So if you want to be the nimble, ninja-like, fast-moving, assault-type character, you can. And if you want to be the slower-moving, rocket-launcher-carrying character who destroys entire buildings, well, you can. Not everything in the game is about destruction, though. You can see here the use of what was described by the team as a goo gun, which allows players to build things like bridges or minor cover as well. We'll see more of this in my trailer breakdown. Let's talk about the closed alpha playtest first, though. While the game will eventually be available for PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox X and S, the playtest will be on PC only, and it will be limited in size, so not everyone that has signed up for playtesting will get access to the first playtest. More specifically, the playtest will generally only be available to players in Europe, USA, and Canada. That, of course, will disappoint players who miss out, but I think the Embark team have been very clear that the playtests are not just a marketing beat, and that they are actually about them finding bugs and testing core game features and their operational capabilities. They've also said that larger playtests will come soon, so if you do miss out, hopefully you won't have too long to wait for the next opportunity. The playtest starts in just a couple of days on Thursday, September 29, at 2pm Central European Summertime, with various local times shown here to help you. It will run through until October 3rd, 9am Central European Summertime again with other local times shown. So those who make it into the alpha will almost get four full days to play. You won't however be able to stream or post gameplay footage of the alpha play test, it is a closed test, but you'll be able to post your thoughts about the game online for all to see. I have been told that despite me being way down here in little old New Zealand, I will be granted access to the playtest. So I'll be playing on a West Coast US server, which is usually okay from a ping point of view. And I'll be sure to let you know my thoughts about the game as soon as I've had a chance to give it a good shakedown. Okay, so now let's dive into all the details shown in the trailer. The finals trailer opens with the same arcade style insert coin prompt that we saw in the Gamescom teaser for the game, followed by the Embark and Nexon logos, with Nexon of course being the majority shareholder of Embark Studios, although Embark are making and publishing the game themselves. We then jump to footage of the feet of contestants in the finals making their way to the game. We get a flash of the Ospoos logo, which we learned about a month ago is one of the Season Zero sponsors for the game. Here we see our first proper view of one of the teams of three with a variety of cosmetic choices, 
from plain t-shirt to cowboy hats to almost looking like the biker guy from the village people. Get ready for plenty of character customization in this game. Also note the saber style sword on the leftmost character. Here we see a new season sponsor's logo, Volp, which has a real Volcom look to it. No surprises there with Embark's own Rob Brunison sporting a Volcom cap in the Embark co-founders photo. We then briefly see a suppressed MAC-10 machine pistol with what looks like a Marvel comic influence skin on it. That's followed by a blue lit character. Primary colours seem to be used here to distinguish teams. The character appears to carry an M60 LMG or similar LMG. That then cuts to a yellow lit character carrying an AK variant. We then see yet another season sponsor logo which says Veia. And that's then followed by a symbol, and we get quite a few of these throughout the trailer. This yellow one actually looks remarkably similar to content creator Jack Frag's logo. This is followed by another very simple green symbol, and then a blue one, which we've actually previously seen a dark version of on the key art image for the game. Whether these are logos for future in-game sponsors or symbols for something else is unclear at this stage. A close-up of a character's face followed by a character with a Squid Game influenced mask holding the suppressed MAC-10 again with what looks like a charm dangling from it. So it's likely that these are going to be part of weapon customization. A couple of brief shots of a character with a Kitsune or Japanese Fox mask, then a gas mask wearing character, then a team that includes a Samurai character and a hockey mask wearing character on the right who also has the Season Zero SLT sponsors logo on their leg. That jumps to yet another team with the front character wearing an ammo belt and then we jump to an interesting team where we see remarkably different body types. When the Embark team were introducing the game to us yesterday, Rob Brunison made the comment about the FPS genre, which is one of the biggest in the gaming industry, having become kind of stale. And if you think about hitboxes for FPS characters, a lot of the time developers across the industry just constrain themselves to making all the characters the same size. But here we clearly see huge differences between the characters and presumably the size of the hitbox varies too. This must be one area that Embark are taking a confident step outside the box and as players we'll clearly have some choices to make when it comes to our bespoke characters' strengths and weaknesses. In this team, again, some more body size differences but a touch more subtle than before. A bit of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre look going on on the right here. After the parade of various teams, we then have a team running towards some sort of portal where they jump into the arena and we get the proper gameplay part of the trailer underway, which is also marked by the appearance of the pre-alpha footage caption for the remainder of most of the trailer. The team jump into the Monaco map, which I think all of the trailer is set in. They head down slope where they spot a cash box with the finals logo on it. They grab it. And that causes a flurry of coins to appear. Also note the floating inflatable flamingo in the background here, which we've seen as an Easter egg before in the last teaser. It also looks like the arena perimeter is where the cliff top is here. Once the cash box is secured, the team use some sort of zip line to fly back uphill to street level. You can see from the footage, if you look closely, that just as the Embark team have said, there are obvious places where the game still needs to be polished, like the zip line animation looks a bit clunky as one example. So you can see they've put pre-alpha footage on the trailer for a reason. Okay, this is a good location to give you an idea of the level of detail that Embark have gone to with their locations. This location is St. Nicholas Cathedral in Monaco. And then here is the real location so you can see it side by side. I think the attention to detail is superb, even including the teal coloured window shutters on the building next door. With the game maps all set in iconic locations, we're probably in for a real treat when it comes to how well the maps will stand up to these real world comparisons. Note the inflatable rubber ducks over the map here, which we also saw in the opening of the Gamescom teaser. Above the ground is this large purple balloon-like object. Now various other coloured ones are spotted in similar locations elsewhere in the trailer too, but it's not at all clear what their function is yet. Our team then land on the road next to the cathedral and we see this purple object here. You'll see what it's used for in a moment. We also see the arena perimeter is attached to these poles with lights on them for nighttime rounds. We then take fire from an opponent and if we jump forward a little in the trailer you can see our teammate with the cash box in front of them. Now it's not clear how the box is held levitating there, maybe this is just a pre-alpha animation thing or the mechanic just isn't explained yet. We can see on our side of the player's AK there's an attachment point for a charm to be added as well. 
In front of our player is that purple canister which we pick up and throw towards the opponent. The camera then jumps to the opponent's view with the canister flying towards them and as it lands it explodes into this expanding foam like substance which looks like the same as the goo gun I mentioned earlier. This provides some cover for the team making their escape from this M60 wielding character. Note that the cash box is still being carried away by the lead player and then the blue outline of the player we were following, while it's not entirely clear what this is, perhaps some kind of shielding maybe. In the middle of that sequence we just watched was a quick flash of this red symbol or logo and then this blue one. It's not clear if these again are sponsor logos or something else, like perhaps you can make up your own team symbols for instance. Following the last part of that action sequence we get the Season 0 sponsor Issel T's logo followed by another logo with the word HALTO. At this point I'm starting to wonder just how many sponsors there will be per season. We then move to a rooftop view of the same characters running past the cathedral as they come under fire from more opponents including one standing on a yellow shipping container, more of which are dotted around the map. Yet another goo canister here. The cash box carrying character is then taken out which results in a red statue being dropped on the ground. Although when the camera jumps to their teammates view the statue is blue, maybe a little continuity issue there. Gold coins fly through the air as the cash box is dropped too. Note that the red gas tank and the 44 gallon drum on the street side here, both of these look like they can be used as weapons. A teammate then picks up the cash box to try and carry it in the direction his lost buddy was heading. The rooftop character then zips down to the street level to continue the fight. We can see the match timer on the arena structure here so you'll have the constant pressure of time in your view regularly during the game. A little janky cut in the trailer here but then the zipline character hits the samurai dude and we see his death animation up close which kind of peels over him as he turns to coins and another red statue drops out which seems to be a regular part of the death animation. Okay, then we jump to a new scene of a battle in an alleyway, a couple of M60s laying fire down the alley and the opponent uses that goo gun again to protect themselves, then another weird symbol followed by another one and yet another, although this one we have seen on a character in the concept which was posted on Twitter fairly recently. The camera then jumps down the alley to the opponent's view and we get to see the goo gun in action for the first time. I reckon it's an interesting defensive weapon and could be used pretty well if you have teammates who are set up in a more offensive mode. A cash box then gets picked up only for its owner to immediately get a face full of sledgehammer from a character wearing a choice horned gold mask and skull t-shirt. Hey a floating gas lamp, hashtag pre-alpha. The death animation from the sledgehammer blow gets superimposed in front of the tagline for the Issel T season sponsor which says the bias wrecker as seen here previously. The end of the kill sees the cash box landing on the ground. In the background is the Pop Poor Perform tagline from Ospoos which is the other Season 0 in-game sponsor. We then get just a frame or two of a character zip lining up to the top of a building which is starting to be destroyed. We then jump to the top of the building where the character is reloading their revolver as the cash box appears to be extracted in this yellow machine while another player stands guard. Then an upside down frame of a rather odd looking rifle, let me know if you know what this is. Then a bit of a jumble of images including one that shows the match clock well before we get a good look at building destruction for the first time. We can see that the buildings break into individual chunks as do the railings around the buildings. A single frame of a rather patchy version of the Ospoos egg mascot here. Then a view of players running down an alleyway as one of them lobs a black 44 gallon drum in front of them and there's also some sort of gated machine here that looks like it operates maybe by pushing the green button. We then jump to a spot outside a place called La Coin Cafe. I wonder if this is a location that you might be able to purchase items that you need while playing the game. Either way the building it's in gets destroyed in a large explosion from our character's rocket launcher. Meanwhile up on a roof our silver skeleton hand character like we've seen before here is taking pot shots at enemies below with a pistol. Then we jump to a 44 magnum wielding character heading to a cash box which then has the raised flower bed beside it get hit out of nowhere. Undeterred our character grabs the cash box as the building housing La Coin Cafe nearby crumbles to the ground. We then jump back to the character zip lining to the top of the building and reloading their weapon as the cash box is placed into the extraction unit. Now we see the same machine being covered by the goo gun foam, perhaps to ensure the extraction can't be interrupted. Some sort of laser machine then appears over the extraction unit which maybe signals the extraction process is underway or perhaps protects it. Meanwhile another character happily watches over the proceedings. 
We then get a view of a partly destroyed building being hit again by a rocket launcher, and then a view from within a building of probably the same thing happening. It's very obvious now that the destruction in this game is going to be absolutely crazy. Players from within the destroyed building fire at those on the ground while the building around them continues to disintegrate. This section of the trailer is really a showcase of the awesome destruction the game will offer. The rooftop balcony falls out from under this character and they fall with it towards the ground. We then see a player zip lining up through a building and we get a good look at how the building breaks up into pieces at the same time. Another angle of that player zip lining up through the building as players around them all stand on partly destroyed floors which will provide an amazingly dynamic environment. Another hit to the building sees a floor dropping and a player following it. Watch how their legs bend up as they fall which I think is a really neat little attention to detail. And they land on the angled floor, quite an amazing animation really, especially for pre-alpha gameplay footage. A character then moves to an opening in the partly damaged building only to see an almost completely destroyed building next to them. They then vault the wall and jump over to the destroyed building. Then we're back inside with the 44 Magnum character as their building falls to bits and the extraction machine bounces off the floor in front of them before the floor above them falls down right on top of them. We now see our rather beaten up looking Iggy friend again with a Colt Python 357 Magnum. We then move to a really shaky view adjacent to one of the cash box extraction machines and an enemy player looks like they're firing some kind of laser. The view moves to a teammate behind who can see the extraction machine and the building being hit. Now we move to a player carrying a 44 gallon drum which is on fire and they yeet it down the alley at the opponents. We then get an ADS view for the first time. Hey, it's an FPS after all. This looks like an M60 being used, so kind of ironic that's being used while standing. The 44 gallon drum is hit and explodes in a massive fireball. Jumping to a very clear rooftop view which shows the Monaco scenery in the background, the M1A carrying character is reloading as they cross a bridge made by the goo gun being used by their teammate on the other side. We then see those weird balloons hanging above the streets here with still no real clue what they're actually for. We then see the same thing from below as another player reloads their shotgun which appears to have some minor pre-alpha rendering issues. We move to a nighttime scene with a samurai character apparently protecting their head with their arms as they smash through a wall using their body. We also see a rain effect here. Back to a daytime scene and our character lobs in a propane tank from above as they jump down towards two opponents with their tiger stripe skinned suppressed pistol in their hand. Then back to another night scene with a player using a flamethrower, we then jump to a player on the other side, they look like they might have an MP7 machine gun here. Nighttime destruction looks like it is going to be super chaotic. We then have a player ziplining through a window which is pretty darn cool. We see them carrying a universal camoed MAC-10 and they take out a bandaged faced opponent with an M60. Next a player with an AK approaches a shipping container where another team are all hiding with what look like laser mounted weapons. We're back to a nighttime scene with a player apparently on fire and protecting themselves with their arms. We then get a few frames of a pug dog that we saw in the Gamescom teaser, this time wearing an Embark logoed cap. Nice to see the merch. We then have a single frame of a street scene with a building being hit followed by what appears to be a construction site. Then a player about to draw a katana sword in a Monaco parkland. Another view of a player using a flamethrower and then the trailer finally wraps up with the finals logo and lets us know that the closed alpha playtest will commence on September 29. So what are my thoughts about all of this? Well firstly I'm really delighted how clear and direct the Embark team are being about the state of the game and the purpose of the playtests. This alongside with their recent easter egg puzzles that they've been posting for the finals community is really giving the impression that they want to do the best by their community, which is fantastic. But then what about the game? Well, the finals as a game looks absolutely mad. The level of destruction and apparent flexibility we'll have as players to play the way we want is going to make for some crazy moments and honestly just looks like a lot of damn fun. And when was the last time we said that about an FPS game? There are a lot of things that are pointing to the finals as being a great game but really the next step is for us to play it. Before then though let me know your thoughts about what you've seen in the comments below. Let's get stuck into some discussion about it. If you found this video helpful please consider leaving a like and subscribe if you'd like to watch more from my videos. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Kia kaha. Stay strong.